by this section. The Mayans had several calendars, but the two main ones, if you turned them into wheels and rotated them in an opposite circle, the two dates would coincide once every 52 years. Kukul Khan was laid out to harmonize with the structure and motion of the cosmos itself. As witness, the perfectly straight axle waves that point directly to the place of the rising and setting sun at solstice and equinox are the total of 364 steps and 52 slabs to a side that adorn the Great Pyramid. Side, the back away from the probably south, southeast. Spring equinox, one sees Cool Cool Khan coming down through the stairs. And the craftsmen, well, all those people were thousands, and then they had to be fed and supported, literally, because they were building the temple. Their faces are, you just about can't see them, but their big jaws are open facing them. Still a little man laying on his back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's the chalk move. Chuck. The guy laying down on his stomach was a little dish, and that's where they'd lay the victim out, cut him open, and put his heart on the dish. Oh, Fire Diego de Landa came to America while the Mayan Indians still lived at Chichen Itza. He witnessed some of the horrible sacrifices that occurred here. His eyewitness account is as such. After the priest and his officers had anointed the stone with blue and purified the temple to drive away the evil spirit, the chalks then seized the poor victim and swiftly laid him on his back across the stone, and the four took hold of his arms and legs, spreading them out. Then the executioner came with a flint knife in his hand, and with great skill made an incision between the ribs on the left side below the nipple. Then he plunged in his hand and like a ravenous tiger tore out the living heart, which he laid on a plate and gave to the priest. He then quickly went and anointed the faces of the idols with that fresh blood. At times they performed this sacrifice on the stone situated on top of the temple, and then they threw the dead body rolling down the steps where it was taken by the attendants, was stripped completely of skin save only on the hands and feet, and then the priest stripped, clothed himself with that skin, and danced with the rest. There's his face and his arms are out here like this, his hands are like this. You just look at them all, each one's just a little different. Here's one you can see really here. Soldiers right here. Soldiers right here. subjugated, supporting the conquered. And that's basically, basically what these are. Now, here you see them again. Here, this one, this headgear stuff is what you find on the priests. This big feathered head, headpiece. A Spanish guy with a sword could kill ten Aztecs just riding by, see? He's on this big horse and he says, well, if they didn't know what a horse was, because they didn't know that this wasn't a rider and a horse, they must not have known what the horse was. Uh -huh. All that tells me is that during that hundred or two or three hundred year period, they maybe weren't using horses. It doesn't mean they never did, but that's the reasoning that they used to say that these people didn't know about the horse. A jaguar basically was a communicator to the, to the Kukul Khan. He delivered the sacrifice and the message to bless the people. And then here you have the eagle which is another symbol for, you know, carrying that message. And he's looking the other way, and he's got a heart in his claw. His face looking that way. Yeah. He's got an instrument he's playing, some kind of a horn. This is the ball court at Chichen Itza. Ball courts similar to this are found all over the Yucatan. The rules of the game are vague, however, many people believe they used a large rubber ball and bounced it off their hips, their elbows, and their knees and tried to make it into a ring up above the court. One thing they know for sure is that the game was played to the death. There is controversy, however, as to whether or not it was the losing team that was killed or the winning team, as sacrifice was considered such a great honor. Quetzalcoatl means feathered serpent. Serpents have been used among Christian and pagan peoples as a symbol of both good and evil. Lucifer, who tempted Eve through the mouth of a serpent, is called that great dragon and that old serpent, thus giving foundation to the use of serpents as an evil symbol. Moses, by command of the Lord, raised a brazen serpent before Israel in similitude of the fact that Christ would be lifted upon the cross, thus giving foundation to the use of serpents as a good symbol. 
Book of Mormon people understood this symbolism, as Nephi the son of Helaman taught, referring to Moses. Did he not bear record that the Son of God should come, and as he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so shall he be lifted up who should come? And as many as should look upon the serpent should live, even so as many as should look upon the Son of God, with faith, having a contrite spirit, might live, even unto life which is eternal. And then you get the feathered serpent, which literally became the representation. When Cortez came to Mexico, he was white and bearded, and they believed that he was Quetzalcoatl returning, and that's why they took him to the Tenochtitlan, the capital city, which is now Mexico City, was a city. But they took him inside. Montezuma welcomed him in as a god. He soon found out he wasn't because he was out gathering up his gold and silver to haul back to Spain. And by that time, he was already in the city. He'd already brought it was already Europe, too late. Huh? European diseases that killed the Aztecs from inside for a thousand months. So you've got the serpent giving life to man, a Mayan man at that, okay? Legend has it that this house was built for three people who came to Chichen Itza from whence nobody knows where they came. They knew very little about them except that they were celibate and they had a great deal of wisdom. People came from all around to listen to their advice. It looks like they're coming out of their house right now. See, that's a good picture. A lot of people didn't understand because sometimes it comes up in the morning and sometimes it comes up at night. It actually goes around the back of the world kind of thing. I don't know if you just call it the whole lot. It orbits different. It orbits different and so sometimes it appears a different place in a different morning instead of at night. So a lot of people didn't really understand it was the same star. The Mayans knew that it was. Friar Diego de Landa made this comment. Baptism is not found anywhere in the Indies save here in the Yucatan. Its origin we have not been able to learn, but it is something that they have always used and for which they have such devotion that no one fails to receive it. The Mayans used what's called a false arch or a corbelled arch. And they'd come up and then these actually, see how these are actually shaped? Uh -huh. And then that sit on the top. And it just, you can take that off and it still sits there. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them actually building rooms over at Ekbalam tomorrow. They're actually... That arch, the stronger it gets. It pushes itself right tight, it gets stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. and there's the man, and there's the horse. That's the butt you just pointed out, and the head goes out the other side. Do that again. That can be helpful. Just the head. Well... And here's the head, and the ear, the body, and the legs, and here's a man standing by. Oh. Okay, now, it's not a big horse. Like a donkey. Or it's a little man, or whatever, or whatever, the relationship. But there's no animals here in the Yucatan that's anywhere near that big in relation to man, except the jaguar is the biggest animal. Fertility. Fertility, or a life-giving, or appropriating God. In the earring. This is more. This is Kukulkan is the Mayan name for the same god that the Mexicans call Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl had many Christ-like attributes. For example, Quetzalcoatl was the creator of life. Quetzalcoatl taught virtue. Quetzalcoatl was the greatest lord of all. Quetzalcoatl had a long beard and the features of a white man. The Mesoamericans believed that Quetzalcoatl would return. According to Mayan history, in order to please the gods and induce visions, the Mayan Indians would take young warriors and throw them into the cenote. They would make them tread water for three days, and if at the end of the three days they were still alive, they would pull them out and ask them if they had seen a revelation. If they had not, they'd throw them in for another three days.